Hello and welcome, history fans, to History Play-by-Play. -play. Today, the beginning of a series on impeachment. Stand all alone. Dangle, shot. He scores! All right, so to start this, we're going to be talking about the impeachment, specifically of the presidents, uh, of Andrew Johnson, of Bill Clinton, and I'm more or less going to skip Donald Trump because that's way too soon and we really haven't seen the impact. I don't think we've seen fully the impact of the Clinton impeachment. And Trump is way too soon. So we're going to talk about two of the three and a little bit extra, uh, along with things that go along with impeachment. Uh, but to, before we do that, we really need to define what is impeachment. Uh, impeachment is not removing the president. We have never removed a president. We've removed a few other lower officials, but we've never removed a president. We have impeached three. There's a difference. Impeachment is simply the formal accusation of charges. You are charging the president with crimes. You are saying that the president, you have done things wrong, and we are calling you to task, and we may remove you for it. Let's look at what the Constitution actually says. Article 1, Section 4, which is really where impeachment is. The President, Vice President, and all civil officers of the United States shall be removed from office on impeachment for conviction and conviction of treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors. That's really it. Um, the, keep in mind, we would talk about treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors. You cannot remove someone because they're incompetent or bad at their job or unfit for their job or that you don't like them or that maybe they even committed small things that aren't worthy of high crimes and misdemeanors. Uh, but what is exactly does that mean? Are those disgraceful acts? Is that a high crime? Is that a misdemeanor? Violating the public trust? Harm to the honor of the United States? What is too trivial a crime? And Are crimes you did as a private citizen the same as things you do as a president? How much impact? The, the greatest thing about the Constitution is how vague it is and how it can apply to just about every situation. The worst thing about the Constitution is how vague it is and how it can apply to almost every situation. It's amazing how that document works. It is, and I'm not saying that is being dismissive. I'm saying that that's the brilliance of the Founding Fathers, that they wrote a document that works 200 years later on things that they never had any concept existed, and yet there it is. It still works. There's a reason it's the longest-lasting document of governance in the world. However, because it is so vague and it covers so many things and has so much room for interpretation, we don't always know what the Founding Fathers meant. We don't know were there places that the Founding Fathers, maybe they, they've been outdated. We should disagree now. Were they disagreed? Were they agreed with it then? We've seen that happen already. The most obvious is slavery. Well, may, some supported, some didn't. Regardless, it's unconstitutional, thanks to the 13th Amendment. What about the rest, though? And that's really what it comes down to. And, and Gerald Ford, who was a man who was known for speaking rather plainly, when he was in the House of Representatives, he said that the high crimes and misdemeanors means whatever a majority of the House of Representatives considers them to be at a moment in history. So what was high crimes and misdemeanors in 1867 is not the same as 1999, is not the same as 2017. Uh, big differences in, in all of this. It's all about what our representatives believe. Uh, and, of course, we elect the representatives, so vis-a-vis, -vis, it's what we believe. Um, but that's vague, and it's deliberate, and it's frustrating. But that's the point. That's why it works. It's rather crazy how that actually functions. So those are the reasons you can be removed for office. Treason, bribery... Those two are fairly straightforward, though, you know, are, how, how much, how little. Um, other high crimes and misdemeanors. Um, what does that mean? It's up to the House of Representatives. In Article 1, Section 2, talking about the powers of the Congress, uh, specifically the House of Representatives, it says the House of Representatives shall have shall choose their speaker and other officers, and yes, that misspelling is as it is in the Constitution, not so much a misspelling as an alternative spelling of the time, uh, choose their, and shall have the sole power of impeachment. That's it. That 
That's all it says about what the House does to impeach. And so, if you know anything in government, the House impeaches the president, brings those formal charges, and then it goes to the Senate as the court case to decide whether or not the president will be removed. The House has drawn up articles four times for four different presidents. It has formally impeached three times. We'll talk about that exception in another video. But that's all there is. Now, the House will usually come together and set rules on what should be for that impeachment, but that's completely up to them. That's completely their decision, and they could go without. Or they could put whatever rules they want in place. If the House says that you have to do all of your testifying while wearing a funny hat, then you have to wear the funny hat. Uh, they could say that it has to be on Zoom, and it would have to be. It's whatever they want. Quite literally, whatever they want. As long as the House agrees to it, that's the rule. Done. If the House votes to accept impeachment and formally impeach the President, then it goes to the Senate for the trial. The Senate shall have the sole power to try all impeachments. They choose how that means. Um, when sitting for that purpose, they, there shall be an oath or affirmation saying that they're all going to do their best duty for the country and not just do this on partisan lines. Uh, when the President of the United States is tried, the Chief Justice shall preside. So instead of the Vice President, which is usually presiding over the Senate as the uh, tie-breaking vote, um, it goes that the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court will step in and be the one who is directing the trial. Um, and no person shall be convicted without the concurrence of two-thirds of the members present. So you need a two-thirds vote to remove a president. That hasn't been done. Ever. Now, here's the other thing. that It is not a criminal trial. By no means is this a criminal trial. Judgment of impeachment shall not extend further than to removal from the office and disqualification to hold and enjoy any office of honor, trust, or profit under the United States. Um, that's it. That's all a, a, an impeachment can do is remove you and bar you from serving again. That's it. It is not a criminal trial. They cannot put you in jail. They cannot do anything else but remove you or uh, ban you from office. And it doesn't necessarily have to be one and the other. It, it could, you know... You're forbidden from serving again after this term. Assumably, it's vague enough that you could make that happen. Those are the only two things they can do. Uh, however, the party convicted shall nevertheless be liable and subject to indictment, trial, and judgment. You could follow the impeachment with an actual trial. But the impeachment itself, not a trial. It is completely different. The last thing a lot of people like to ask, well, can the president pardon themselves... This, in Article 2, Section 2, talks about the pardons. Uh, and he shall have power to grant reprieves and pardons for offenses against the United States, except in cases of impeachment. So no, the president cannot, cannot uh, pardon themselves and avoid impeachment. Uh, beyond that, may maybe? But uh, one would assume that the president is removed from office and then no longer has the ability to pardon uh, himself or herself. So... No, a president cannot pardon themselves, they cannot pardon their way out of an impeachment. Finally, I wanted to uh, mention the, the treason, um, that because that's one of those high, things that go along with bribery and high crimes and misdemeanors. Um, the treason is specifically uh, an act against the United States government, um, levying war against them or adhering to their enemies, giving them aid and comfort. Um, and, and it's a pretty high bar to get treason. It's not something that's done lightly ever. Um, so to get that one in there, you're, you're not, you're not going to look for that. It's the high crimes and misdemeanors that has been the, the basis for all of the impeachments of presidents. Um, and we'll take a look at other stuff as they go on, but fin finishing up our intro, there have been 20 impeachments by the house of representatives ever. It is not just for presidents, for all federally elected officials. And uh, every state has their own impeachment thing for their own state officials, and that has been done various amounts of times. But there have been 20 in federal history from the U.S. House of Representatives. One senator, one cabinet secretary, 15 judges, and three presidents have been impeached. Johnson, Clinton, and Trump. And we're going to take a look at them and Richard Nixon, uh, as well as the rest of those guys, in videos coming up. So, stay tuned. That's the end of the episode. What you just saw is this teacher's interpretation of events. 
If you use this for a class, let me know how that went in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you can figure out how today's jersey matches the content, let me know in the comments. That's extra credit. I'm John Baranowski, and thanks for watching.